us a bit about the guest we're uh, hoping to get on in the next minute or so. The guest that we hope to get on is a, uh, a young lady uh, from uh, the uh, Hagerstown area originally. I've known her for probably 25, 30 years, maybe more. Uh, she and her husband and young family live in the in Morocco. Uh, they run a tourist hostel. Uh, they're in the foothills of the High Atlas Mountains, which was the epicenter of the uh, of the earthquake. Uh, Everybody thinks of Marrakesh. Uh, there's a lot of damage and a lot of deaths in Marrakesh. Uh, they're approximately 40, 45 miles closer to the epicenter than what Marrakesh was. Uh, first thing, uh, when I heard about the earthquake, I called her dead and asked how she was doing. And uh, fortunately, they were well. Uh, it had to have been frightening because they, uh, about 11 o'clock in the evening, their time, the earthquake hit. Uh, their young daughter was at a friend's house on the other side of town. Uh, even though that section of town was not damaged as much as what Rhonda's section of town was, the unknown of not having your family close to you must have been even more horrifying. Uh, but the uh, uh, the husband, Tony, and the, uh, the uh, teenage son, J.J., uh, spent the evening or the, uh, the, the night uh, and into the next day in rescue and recovery operations. A lot of these small village they were living in uh, was extensively damaged. Uh, they were um, uh, several deaths recorded. Uh, several friends uh, were uh, uh, the lost some friends. Uh, it had to be an absolutely terrifying experience, uh, and that's we we're hoping Rhonda will call in. She's on now. Yeah. We'll get a first hand view of what it must have been like in those terrifying hours. Rhonda, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Can you pronounce your last name for us? Good morning. Thank you for having me. My last name is Zivo. Zivo. Okay. Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, if you could tell us uh, what you're witnessing around you this morning from Morocco. Um, what we're witnessing this morning is um, a lot of chaos still, a lot of dis there's also I don't know, a lot of help that is here, and um, and that is that's great to see. Rhonda, you're breaking up some, so uh, would you try that again, please? What you're you're seeing chaos and and what, please? Uh, there's there's chaos and destruction. Many buildings uh, collapsed, uh, but there's also a lot of help that has come. Um, it can help um, the people who are here, the injured and those who have passed away and those who are still living outside of their homes in makeshift camps. I was struck by reading your account uh, amidst all the destruction and the death and the injury. The theme that you you that came through were the strength and the gentleness and the uh, the love and care and compassion of the Moroccan people. It's so true. We have all always been overwhelmed by the amazing hospitality of the Moroccans and their resilience. And we have seen in the face of crisis the way that they pull together. Uh, they live as community. They share everything they have. And it has been great to watch. Tell us a little bit about those uh, the, when the earthquake hit. Uh, it was at 11 o'clock at night, I believe, and uh, your young daughter was uh, with friends uh, across town. Uh, what was some of the reaction of you and Tony and JJ? Um, I, it was, it was like you said, terrifying. It was one of the most terrifying. Um, it was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. We live in a third-floor apartment. Um, the sway and the movement in the building, uh, we thought it was going to come down on us and that we wouldn't survive. Uh, but when it finally stopped and we realized we could get out of the building, uh, we got out as fast as we could. It was, um, it was, it was utter chaos. And the village is uh, at the foot of the High Atlas Mountains. It's a village of approximately what size? Uh, yes, it is around 20,000 people. And of those, uh, how many, there were deaths recorded. Uh, do you have any idea of the number of people in your village that, were, that, that died? And do you know anyone personally that died? Yes, it said uh, one, in, one in every ten, one of every ten people uh, has died in this disaster. And we know many personally. Mm. How terrifying. So, and we're looking at some pictures now of the, uh, of the, 
uh, chaos, and I suspect that may have been in Marrakesh, uh, which, as I said, was farther from farther from uh, the epicenter in which you are. Uh, what is the, uh, uh, were many of the buildings uh, literally uh, uh, wiped out, or are they just, uh, uh, any of them still habitable? Um, yeah, I think of all the 20,000 people, I don't know of any person that is uh, habitating their building. If they were not wiped out, they were severely damaged, have large cracks, or are too worrying for um, anyone to go back into until they can be properly assessed to see if there's structural damage and if they're considered safe, especially in the light that there could still be um, large aftershocks. And the, the weather there, folks are living outside, I assume now, uh, is the, what is weather like? It can be, kind of, it can be quite cold um, there st during certain seasons. Yeah, so it's actually right now it's quite hot and sunny uh, during the day, which is challenging as people are trying to seek shelter so that they're not in the sun all day. And then in the in the night it's quite it's quite cold and chilly, so they need blankets and things to keep warm during the night. And many of the roads are blocked due to rock slides. Are you able to get supplies in? Yes, we've had a, we've seen great success with that. We're not um, doing any official relief, but we've been doing a lot just with the locals and uh, other. Uh, international business people who live in Marrakesh, they've been bringing up lots of supplies and we've been able to see a lot of them get in. Yesterday, some of the roads were blocked in the morning, but by afternoon, um, the government had brought in equipment and they had cleared the roads so people were able, were able to get help. Uh, today as well, we saw several teams that hiked in past uh, the places where the roads were blocked and they've had encouraging reports, uh, even though there has been damage and death in those places, uh, they've been able to go and uh, gather what is needed to assess the situation so that more help can be sent. I remember the earthquakes in, I believe it may have been Iraq, a couple, three or four years ago, there was great criticism uh, that the government was not doing, very, doing enough. I'm getting the, from you that the, you have just the opposite sensation or reaction. You think the government has been as responsive as they can be. Is that correct? That is correct. I'm always amazed by the Moroccan government and the way that they pull through and things like this. Uh, for example, we didn't have electricity for 48 hours, but after 48 hours, the fact that they could restore electricity is, is almost miraculous, really. And we've seen the military here on the ground from, from day one, and they've just been pouring in with support and with um, donations and personnel and medical personnel and things. So it's been, it's been great, yes. Uh, there are obviously uh, villages higher in the mountains than what you are and more isolated. Uh, have you heard any reports from more isolated villages? Yeah, some of our teams took uh, supplies out there today, and we have heard reports. Um, a lot of them have food and water, um, have damage to their buildings. Some of them have deaths. Some of the villages don't. But most of them need um, tents and blankets or warm clothes because higher up it is quite a bit colder. Um, there are some villages that have been completely annihilated, um, and it's sad, sad to hear that. But... Um, the military has responded to those and is helping uh, with the cleanup and the and the rubble and getting supplies and things to those who may be remaining. And the uh, uh, within your village itself, are, are you still under rescue and recovery operation? Yes, I uh, believe so. But I think that at this point, most of it is um, people families want want their dead out of the rubble so that they can give them a proper burial. I don't know that there has been any more rescues. Um, since, since yesterday. Uh, Rhonda, if I missed this earlier, my apologies. We were doing uh, some technical work trying to getting, uh, get some photos up from Morocco, but ha was your building structurally damaged? Uh, yes, uh, it has a, a lot of large cracks and a, a, large, um, a large section where the concrete fell off. Um, and inside, there was lots of things that fell and, and broke, but it seems to be one that's a bit sturdier than, than some of the others. Are you able to sleep in your building tonight? No, we are sleeping uh, outside. No one is risking sleeping in their building uh, until it can be assessed for actual structural damage, whether it's safe or not. Do you have any, at, at this time, idea when it will be that you'll be able to go back to living indoors uh, and such yeah i think we've all come come to grips with the fact that there is no returning to our lives as normal anytime soon 
Um, but yes, we hope that sooner rather than later, the buildings will be assessed and people, if there are buildings that are able to be habitable, that people can go back in as soon as possible. What are you doing? So that we don't see that any happening anytime soon. What are you doing for food and water and such? Um, there's been a great response, again, from Marrakesh, from other communities and other parts of, um, of Morocco, from internationals and from locals, and they've been supplying uh, food and water and all the other things that are needed up here um, since it happened. And if you could, uh, how does a person from Hagerstown wind up in Morocco, by the way? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we, we've, I've lived in Africa since uh, the year 2000, so um, I came to this side of the world a long time ago. Uh, helping with community develop pro de development projects and different things like that. And then my husband and I and our children um, decided to come to Morocco. There was a lot of uh, insecurity and unrest in Kenya, and uh, Morocco seemed like a good place, a good place for us to be. Uh, and we felt that we could come and live here. We're trying, we are actually, we were in the process of uh, remodeling uh, a guest house to be able to open for business so that we could have uh, business here, but uh, that one of those buildings has taken quite a bit of damage, so we're waiting also to hear about the assessment from that. Rhonda, there there have been aftershocks. Are more aftershocks uh, predicted? Uh, yeah, I think it's the uncertainty of aftershocks, isn't it, that makes it um, that makes it so terrifying because it's what people fear the most with the way that the structures are weakened. Any large aftershock could be could be another big problem. So far, all of the aftershocks have just been. Uh, have mostly been tremors, nothing too too serious, but I think that there's a possibility that they could continue continue, but no one really no one really can give us an answer of when they'll end and and how this has been an emotional journey, a severe emotional journey for all. How are the kids doing? They are doing <laughs> they're doing really well. They're actually helping with the relief effort. Our daughter um, is in Marrakesh, and she's helping to pack the supplies that are coming up here so that they can be distributed. And our son has done a great job. He's been going into the mountains with uh, groups that are coming from the cities and taking them around and um, helping with the relief effort in villages. Right, we need to let Rhonda go, I presume, fairly soon here, Bill. So final question for her. Well, Rhonda, uh, you're, you and the family are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, I'm privileged, uh, unlike m most of the folks in the listening audience. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to, to know you over the years, and I know your family well. And it was a uh, we were very concerned about you, and not only you, but all of your fellow Moroccans. And uh, it's a... Uh, it's a Hard, uh, it's a very stressful time, but I do come away from this conversation and what I've seen you written uh, that it's uh, unlike other countries. Uh, there's a sense of camaraderie, there's a sense of working together, and there is a lot of uh, support from the government. So, uh, again, our thoughts and prayers are with you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We appreciate mm -hmm. all of the prayers. Yeah. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay. Give a love doll. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.